Good afternoon. Um, obviously, in light of the inclement weather that we are hearing that we will um, most likely experience over the next few days, particularly um, Saturday and Sunday, with the potential for torrential rains, we wanted to go ahead and at least notify the public of many of the preparatory um, things that we do as a city. Um, we wanted to ensure our residents that we are well aware and we're in constant communication with the state agencies as well as um, the Nat National Weather Center forecasts on the potential for um, you know, torrential rains and anything else that might ensue as a result of the threat of a, of a potential hurricane. Um, in light of that, we thought that we would go ahead today and begin to answer many of the questions that a lot of the media has um, been posing all day to us as far as any of the things that our city departments are doing. And of course, those departments that are most affected are public works, with the infrastructure of our city being impacted potentially, and of course, public safety with fire, police, and EMS. At this time, um, I can answer any of the questions that you might have as a city manager. Of course, I speak on behalf of our mayor and city council members, who two of them are with us today, Councilwoman Tamika Isaac Devine, as well as Councilman Sam Davis, um, that we certainly want to um, be here to support any citizens of Columbia who need assistance, first and foremost, if the, the threat of weather becomes that severe. Um, but we also want to make sure you know that we stay prepared for situations like these. And at this time, I can turn it over to either of our council members if they would like to speak. Okay. And of course, our um, chief of police, um, William Skip Holbrook, Fire Chief Aubrey Jenkins, and our assistant city manager over operations, um, Ms. Melissa Gentry, who can speak to your specific questions. And I think each of them will have a few comments, and then we're all open to answering any of your questions at this time. Hello, I wanna talk about what we're doing ahead of any inclement weather. Um, Public Works is out there right now cleaning all the storm drains, making sure that they're going to flow freely and uh, encouraging people not to put debris, debris on the catch basins or in the vicinity of where the rain will fall. We're also working with all of our partner departments to make sure that we're all prepared and we all know where we're going if the rain does fall. We're staging barricades, so there will be barricades placed out in strategic locations and the city is going to do a release to let you know where a lot of the flood prone areas are. I'm sure most of you already know that. We encourage people to turn around if you see flooded streets. It's not safe to drive through them, um, not safe for the motorists. It's also not good for the business and homes around there because sometimes when you're driving through the flood, that's when the water gets into the property. So we really encourage you to turn around for your own safety as well as the um, welfare of all the properties around you. Um, and again, just don't place material on or around catch basins. We are out in our flood prone areas today and tomorrow and throughout the weekend making sure that they're flowing freely. Uh, Ms. Gentry, um, I, I think really covered the basics very well. What I would just reassure everyone is that um, uh, from a public safety standpoint, uh, police and fire have very, very much similar roles. Um, but anytime there's inclement weather, um, it's, it's a service drain and uh, we're responding immediately to emergencies. Um, that's why the pre-positioning of uh, the barricades um, is very helpful for us. It allows us to get ahead of um, uh, some of the trouble spots that we historically know exist in, in, in town. And, um, and again, we ask you to help, help us message this with, uh, with our motorists and citizens. You just have to avoid high water. Um, it's um, what ends up happening is if somebody tries to traverse through the high water, it ends up becoming an emergency call for service with us with a rescue, and, it, and, it, uh, and again, it becomes taxing, taxing on our system. So um, high water, you need to turn around. If, um, if you um, see high, high water, we certainly, uh, extra eyes and ears are, are good for us for reporting. But um, most important, I think, you know, from a reassurance standpoint, um, there's tremendous communication with uh, within the, the city and the various departments that are affected by inclement weather and um, and uh, you know we're prepared to, to, to deal with uh, a weather events such as this but we we need 
assistance and cooperation from our citizenry. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to get up here and repeat what everybody said. I think everything was said that needed to be said. I uh, just want to reiterate um, as far as uh, driving through waters. Uh, too, too often we respond out to calls where people do drive through waters because they can't judge how deep it is. So uh, I would just encourage you not to drive through waters. And also we can um, provide you some, some tips as well. Um, if your home do become flooded, um, just make sure that you get to a higher part of your home if you can't get out, make sure you get you know called 911 to bring to put some assistance. So um, I'd be glad to entertain any questions as, as far as um, you know in, from the safety aspect of it. But as far as what everybody has said, I, I totally agree with what everything everybody has said. And just uh, before we get into any questions, we do want to leave the public with the following. Obviously, the City of Columbia urges drivers to use caution when driving during severe weather. Continue to listen to a National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration weather radio or to a local radio and television station for updated information or instructions as access to roads or some parts of the community may be blocked. Help people who may require special assistance, such as infants, children, and the elderly or disabled. And obviously, if you need information or assistance from us, our customer care line is 545-3300, 545-3300, after 5 o'clock p.m. and on the weekends. And in addition, an alternate non-emergency number is 803-252-2911, 252-2911. And obviously, for emergencies, call 911. We will continue to monitor the situation as it progresses. Um, we would like for you to visit our website at www.columbiasc.net and any of our social media pages for any updates. Any questions? Um, I, I do want to add, add a few things to it from a safety standpoint. Um, normally, when we get this type of, of weather, um, even if it's not high wind, you, got, you can have down trees, you have trees on houses, you have trees on cars, uh, things of that nature. I do want to caution the public that if you do have, in, for instance, in these situations, particularly if you've got down power lines, uh, don't go near the power line. Even if you know it's not active, you, don't, you really don't know that, so we encourage you to stay away from that. If the power go out in your home, uh, you know, we don't advocate using candles, so what I would encourage you to do is maybe get your flashlight, make sure you got some fresh batteries for your flashlight, so in the event the power do go out, you have some type of light. Um, too often, um, when stuff like this occur, it really taxes your public safety. 911 get inundated calls, police, they're running all over the place, the fires running all over the place, public work, uh, they're out as well. So. We want to make sure that we can minimize um, any type of potential stuff that could happen to make sure you stay safe out there. So again, if we have any specific question, we'll be glad to answer. Chief Jenkins, give us a quarter of the nature of voting rights and stuff. What about calling you in preparation? You deploy those to certain areas, maybe more sources of downtown, any of those more areas where all the services may be originating Well, basically, we kind of know the areas. Uh, and, and I think in your presser, um, there'll be some specific areas that will be covered that could possibly have some, some flooding. So what we do, we kind of stay on standby because we're not sure what part of the city we're going to be responding to. So we kind of stay on standby. We have, we have several boats that we can deploy to assist people. So uh, we, we kind of be on standby. Well, we got mutual aids and automated aids with our, our neighboring agencies. So in the event, if we need something, we can always call them and vice versa. If it hits them more so than it hit us, then we can also assist them as well. Well, I, I can say from my perspective, we're going to have our normal um, amount of personnel on due to our, our, our normal um, shift. However, if it starts to escalate and get higher, we can call in more personnel. Yes. 
I would like to add that I'm, I'm very thankful, and I know that all of you have, um, you know, we're all aware of the tragedy that happened yesterday in Forest, Acre, Forest Acres, which is a neighboring community. Our staffs have been um, continuing to assist Forest Acres, and so in addition to the threat for inclement weather, we will continue to do that. Um, our 911 team is here today. They have been um, handling all of the calls for service for Forest Acres, and we will continue to do that until otherwise um, noticed from Forest Acres that they don't need our assistance anymore. So along with this, with the weather, um, and with that tragedy, like you mentioned, we are working with our various agencies as well. We're helping them, and hopefully they will help us if we need to. We will actually be staging the barricades on the side of the streets today. Um, yeah, Five Points is one of the areas. A lot of the flood-prone areas in the downtown, Whaley and Maine already has some barricades that we pull across the street, so we're hitting all of the areas that are known to flood. It's really important to remember that it's not certain they'll flood it, but it's based on how much rain and how quickly it falls and where it falls. But we're prepared and, and we're ready to respond if that happens. Um, basically, I, what I would say, you, you know, anytime you get this, this type of threat, people start going to the stores, buying food, I would say, you know, if you really need to start early so you don't get bombarded in that rush hour lateness, you know, getting out there, uh, getting whatever you need, and, and get you some cooler with some ice in it in case you power to go out so you can at least have some place to store your, your, your cold foods. Uh, for you know several hours or whatever, but the other thing I would say also that, that I didn't really mention, you know, I know people have generators uh, when your power go out, so I would encourage people, you know, you cannot run an outdoor generator on the inside. Make sure it's outside. Uh, the other thing is, if you got to refuel these things, do not refuel them while they're hot. Let them cool off before you refuel them. So again, as far as the medicine concerned, you know, I'm quite sure the Red Cross will be on hand. Um, to assist people, you know, anytime we have any type of, any type of um, tragedy, uh, we can't call the Red Cross to assist people. So if we respond someplace and people need these assistance, what we're going to do, we're going to actually be notifying the Red Cross for them. One of the main differences is we have a little bit of warning so we can plan ahead and that's where we're staging the barricades. The, the intensity of it is we'll, we'll watch the weather to see what the next 24 hours brings. We'll add to our staff from the public work standpoint if in fact the predictions tomorrow are that throughout the weekend it's going to be really intense rains. Um, as far as the areas go, we know based on if it's an intense rain, which areas flood in town? So we're looking at all of them. We're, you know, we're all over the city and ready to respond whenever the rain falls, where it falls. Well, that, that's really a, uh, a city manager decision. That's a pretty um, robust operation that requires a decla uh, declaration and things of that nature. And we would, we would typically uh, work very closely with state emergency management as we would probably be looking at a, a broader footprint beyond just city limits of Columbia. It would probably be uh, more regional or within the Midlands. But, um, you know, the emergency management where it's the city, the county, or, or the state, um, in situations such as this, there's um, um, obviously a lot of communication and, and decision making that is very fluid, and um, um, and it's just you know as the event unfolds, um, decisions 
in terms of response beyond our capacity, we'd, we'd make those decisions. Certainly, absolutely. That was actually one of the things that I was gonna, going to add. You know, our city is growing and thriving on most weekends and very busy. This weekend is no different. There are several events in the city. Um, for example, our Soda City Market, which operates every Saturday. We're already in discussions with the operator of that event to go ahead and make some decisions about that, whether it needs to move into the garage that we always have on standby. But there are other festivals and events that are going on in our city where they are already starting. I think at least two of them have already decided to postpone or cancel. Um, and so we are certainly working with those um, vendors and those folks who operate the various festivals to try to help them make decisions on if they should, um, you know, make decisions to postpone at this point. I've heard from some other entities who are having events in our city as well that are not necessarily directly, um, you know, in conjunction with the City of Columbia, but they're asking for advice on that type of thing. And we're certainly suggesting that based off what we know now, that it is something that they should consider um, as far as postponing or canceling their events. Um, one other thing I would add, fortunately as a city, we have an inclement weather center. Um, we're already prep preparing to open it November 1 for our normal operations for our homeless citizens to serve them on inclement weather nights and very cold nights. But obviously, if we get to any point where we feel that the citizens of Columbia um, need additional sheltering, then we have that at our disposal as well to open the inclement weather center. We certainly hope not. I mean, I think we just, we have to at this point continue to monitor and, you know, we'll make that decision as we know more.